spring at the Nebraska Humane Society, we get in litters of kittens, and most of the time they're too young to be adopted out. So in anticipation of that influx, currently we're looking for foster families. Those are families that take these babies into their homes and care for them until they're ready for adoption. These sweet babies are some of the first born kittens of the year. They'll head off to foster care later today. Fostering offers babies and our more fragile animals, TLC, away from the stresses and other animals at the shelter. They're less likely to catch illness that can be transmitted at the shelter. The foster families provide care, but also play a key role in socializing. They play with and pick up the kittens who get used to touch and learn to be confident around people. This one-on-one -on -one is much better than spending four weeks or eight weeks in a kennel. And during our busiest times, it frees up kennel space for cats, kittens, and other animals ready for adoption. Fosters also take animals that may be recovering from medical procedures. If a pet has surgery that requires time in recovery or physical therapy, we often get those pets out to foster care to heal in peace. They can work injured limbs on carpeted floors instead of more sterile, slick kennels. They can enjoy life on a couch or in a quiet home instead of a kennel with other barking dogs or meowing cats. We also have folks who foster for behavior reasons. Those families take pets who are uncomfortable in the kenneling environment. A dog may have separation anxiety, be under-socialized or fearful. Dogs especially can worry with people walking back and forth in front of kennels. They may not be comfortable in such close vicinity with so many other dogs. They could shut down completely get very stressed and anxious. Most dogs do better in homes, but some actually need a home to feel safe. So fostering helps keep them comfortable and gives us much more information about the type of home they need. The shelter provides foster parents with everything they will need to take care of the animals. Kitty litter and pans, food, bedding, toys and towels, and of course, any medications that may be necessary. All the foster parents provide is a loving home and of course their time. Volunteering for the foster care program is easy. You simply fill out an application available at our front desk or online. Foster staff then visit your home before any animals are placed with you so you can talk about how it's going to work, how to physically set up, and they can answer questions. While providing care, you may need to bring the animals back to the shelter for vaccines or medications, but the majority of your role is just socializing with your fosters to help them grow, develop, or heal. Fostering is an amazing way to impact lives. So if you're interested, you can fill out an application online or you can pop down here to the shelter and fill out an application in person and then get ready to take these babies into your home, play with them, enjoy them, and then give them back when they're ready for adoption. It's kind of like being a grandparent. <laughs> for The Dish, I'm Pam Wee. I love to run but I can't walk a straight line. It's because of my brain. It's been damaged. My previous owner left me unconscious. I still don't know what I did to make her so angry that night. Amazing people found me and gently nursed me back to health. They gave me my second chance. I once overheard a child ask if I'd walk straight again when I got to heaven. Maybe, but right now, I'm enjoying my little piece of heaven on earth. KPAO Community Television, handmade in Omaha since 2013. Hi everyone, I'm Andy Hoig. Hi, I'm Paul Madsen. Hola, ¿qué tal? Mi nombre es Saúl López. KPAO Community Television, where Omaha talks. I couldn't remember what it meant to fetch, or to shake, or even to run. 
All I could do was lie down, held captive by my own matted fur, neglected, broken. Incredible people removed the filth and repaired my crippled body. They helped me look and feel and trust like a dog again. I remember someone whispering, we'll make it better. And after years of abuse, love did just that. At the Nebraska Humane Society, we try to offer classes for people who have taken a basic class with their dog, but still want to keep training. Um, one of the classes that we have that's very popular is the home companion class. What we work on in that class is how to make your dog a better dog to have in your house with you at times like mealtime, when company comes, when the doorbell rings, um, and teaching them some other fun things to do when you're on a walk, um, how to get on a bed and be comfortable there, how to get around an object so maybe you're out for a walk and they get wrapped around a tree or something and it's an easy way they can learn to get around that tree without you going in the mud. Um, the dogs have to have a basic class first but once they've had the basic class, we can work on all kinds of other things. And we take those basic skills and we take them to the next level. Um, one of the things we like to teach a dog is to get on a place or on a bed or on a blanket, whatever you want to call it, Rosie. And basically it's we put a blanket or a towel or something small, um, something that can fit in the trunk of your car, I tell people, um, so that it's easy to have with you at all times. Thank you. And then we just teach them to get on their bed. And then they have to wait. We try for a comfortable spot. Down is usually a really comfortable spot for a dog. We reward it. And then when we want them to, they can get up. Do it again. Get on your bed. Wait. Nice. And I'm always going to reward on the bed because that's where I want her to be. Right here. Nice. Um, it comes in really handy at meal times. It gives your dog a place to be. When company comes, it gives your dog a place to be. They can greet, say hello. And then you can put a blanket or something down, um, give them a bone or something on that blanket, that's where they get to hang. Uh, if you take your dog to, say, kids ball games or things like that, or you take him on a picnic with you or jazz on the green, put a blanket down. They learn how to get on the blanket. It becomes their comfortable spot, and they're happy to be there. Even without being sent, they're like, okay, I can get something here. It gets me something good. Um, if you're out in the grass, some dogs don't like the feel of grass. Rosie doesn't like the feel of the grass on her body. But if I put a blanket down, she's a happy camper. Um, and some dogs are like that. Depending on your dog, you know, dogs with heavy fur coats, they may not want a big blanket. Maybe you take a little washcloth sized piece of fabric and you make, just it's just a target. So the dog goes, oh, all right, I have a spot to be. You can also use it when teaching the doorbell. Where is the dog supposed to be when the doorbell rings? It's not their job to answer the door. That's your job. So we teach them to have a spot away from the door. You can use a blanket. You can also use difference in flooring. So the dog learns this is where I go when the doorbell rings. Um, and it gets me something to be here. Take some practice, but they can learn to do it very, very readily. And it comes in handy. Um, the other thing I like to teach dogs to do is to get around an object. That way, if you're out for a walk or something and they get tangled up around a bush or something and they know how to get around it, we go teach them one way and then down the road, we teach the other way. Here, please. Thank you. Get around. All the way, don't cheat. Nice. So she goes, oh, I have to just get around this object. As they get better, we work more distance. Rosie, get around. Nice. And we make it fun to come back around that. I don't want to stay right up at the, at the, well, ice melt in this case, but anything, it can be anything. You can use your purse. You can use a mixing bowl turned upside down. You can use a bush outside, a rock. Um, Anything just so the dog can't get into it and get something out, obviously. Here. Get around. Nice. She knows going this way pretty well. But if I were to teach her the other way, I would start out simply by luring her. <whistles> Oops, we dropped it. And we would just lure it. And I'd use my other hand. Nice. And eventually you call it something different. But that's how we started. We just lured her around it. So she went, oh, well, this is good. I like this. Um, we also work on do some, doing some loose leash walking. We work on recalls, because if you can't call your dog and they don't show up, where do you go? Um, we talk a little bit about some grooming things and other things then too that people need and having more specific problems with in their home, um, just to make that dog a better family pet. Um, so you're not throwing the dog in a kennel while you're watching a movie. They, they know how to behave themselves. It's a skill that has to be taught just like sits and downs. Fun, fun class to take. Dogs do need to have a basic class under their belt first, so, and then they can take this one. 
Hi everyone, I'm Andy Hoig. Hi, I'm Paul Madsen. Hola, ¿qué tal? Mi nombre es Saúl López. KPAO Community Television, where Omaha talks. I couldn't remember what it meant to fetch, or to shake, or even to run. All I could do was lie down, held captive by my own matted fur, neglected, broken. Incredible people removed the filth and repaired my crippled body. They helped me look and feel and trust like a dog again. I remember someone whispering, we'll make it better. And after years of abuse, love did just that. KPAO Community Television, handmade in Omaha since 2013. I love to run, but I can't walk a straight line. It's because of my brain. It's been damaged. My previous owner left me unconscious. I still don't know what I did to make her so angry that night. Amazing people found me and gently nursed me back to health. They gave me my second chance. I once overheard a child ask if I'd walk straight again when I got to heaven. Maybe, but right now, I'm enjoying my little piece of heaven on earth. Here at the Nebraska Humane Society, March means kitten time and kitten shower is coming up. On March 25th, NHS holds a virtual kitten shower to get ready for the influx of babies that we're going to have coming into the shelter. It's kind of fun. We do it all on social media. And what we do is we offer you a kitten registry so you can get the kittens toys or necessary supplies that they need. We have kitten milk replacer. We have bottles. We have warmers. We have all sorts of things that our kittens are going to need for the upcoming season. The reason why we need so many of these supplies is because we send a lot of our kittens out to foster care. And the foster families are all in different locations. So they each need their own set of supplies in order to take care of the babies. So on March 25th on Facebook, we'll showcase our kitten registry. You'll be able to go in, click on Amazon, pick out anything that you want to for the kittens, and they'll automatically deliver, be delivered right here to the Nebraska Humane Society. It's called the Virtual Kitten Shower. It's March 25th, and it's going to be happening all day on social media. During that time, you'll also be able to pop in for darling videos of cute kittens. Maybe check out kittens being serenaded or the low feeding contest, or we may have a few surprises this year, but lots and lots of kittens to showcase on Kitten Shower. So don't forget, March 25th, our virtual kitten shower. If you're a kitten lover and you wanna help out these babies get off on the right paw, you'll be able to with our kitten registry on Kitten Shower Day on March 25th. I'm Pam Weiss for The Dish. House training is one of the nemesis of puppies, but it can also be hard on new adult dogs or older dogs coming into a house. Um, with an adult dog coming into your house or a non-puppy, non we still need to be careful the first few weeks or a month so that they learn the right way in our house and what we need them to do. Because maybe where they were before, people said, let's go outside and they went out the front door. Maybe in your house you say, let's go potty, and they go out the back door. All of that is different to the dog. They don't just know, so we need to teach them and take the time to do that. Reward the going potty outside so they're like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. Um, sometimes, with, especially if you have an older dog who's maybe a little incontinent, um, potty pads can help. They can also help with young puppies. Um, basically, they're just a big pad with a waterproof backing. Um, and you can put it by the door, you can put it in a, you know, a convenient spot, and just lay it on the ground, and the dog can use it. Don't do it now. Um, <laughs> some dogs think it's a bed. Um, but it's something that can kind of help, especially if you're in an apartment and maybe way up high and it takes 
a, a little bit to get down, it's an, an extra chance for them to be have success practicing while they're figuring out distance. With a brand new puppy coming into your house, you want to make sure and get them out any time that they eat, sleep, play, or you, they start sniffing the ground and you think, oh, they better get out. Um, they don't know how to tell you yet. You don't know what they're telling you. So we need to be careful with all of that. We want to reward when they go potty outside, and it needs to be a high value treat. And that's the only time they see that treat is when they go potty outside. So they're like, oh, this is good. If they have an accident in the house, don't give them attention for it. Just scoop them up, take them outside, reward them for doing good stuff outside, clean up inside, but clean up with something that's, that's made to get out pet odors. You know, vinegar and water gets the smell out for us, but it does not for the dogs. Their sense of smell is too great, so then they may want to go back and mark in that area. Um, but if you reward what you like, give them attention for what you want, that's what they're going to choose to do. If they get negative attention, they're going to choose to do that because it was attention. Um, the more you practice, the better they get, the more you start to figure out what the, how they're telling you what they do before they need to go outside and go to the bathroom. Um, with young puppies, they may learn how to and be great for a month or two, and then all of a sudden they kind of backslide and start having accidents. That's not because they're being nasty. It's because inside their organs have grown. They've lost some of the control for a little bit. Go back to square one, be pretty persistent for a couple days, and they'll be all back on track again. It's just they grow and they lose control a little bit and have to get that back again as they're growing. Um, dogs don't generalize and just say, okay, now I know how to go potty here. If you take them other places to other people's homes or whatever, you're going to have to show them what they need to do at those places so they understand. Otherwise, they won't generalize. Uh, but it's, it's to be persistent, to be helpful, um, and they will, uh, they'll pick it up. We also have a behavior helpline that if you're having trouble, it's a free service and you can call and you'll leave a message. But um, people will, someone will get back to you within 24 hours and they'll help you out as much as they can and give you new things to think about, um, new ways to do things, and that should help a lot as well. Um, but being consistent is gonna be your biggest ticket no matter how old the dog is, and it, they will all figure it out. I love to run, but I can't walk a straight line. It's because of my brain. It's been damaged. My previous owner left me unconscious. I still don't know what I did to make her so angry that night. Amazing people found me and gently nursed me back to health. They gave me my second chance. I once overheard a child ask if I'd walk straight again when I got to heaven. Maybe, but right now, I'm enjoying my little piece of heaven on earth. KPAO Community Television, handmade in Omaha since 2013. Hi everyone, I'm Andy Hoig. Hi, I'm Paul Madsen. Hola, ¿qué tal? Mi nombre es Saúl López. KPAO Community Television, where Omaha talks. I couldn't remember what it meant to fetch, or to shake, or even to run. All I could do was lie down, held captive by my own matted fur, neglected, broken. Incredible people removed the filth and repaired my crippled body. They helped me look and feel and trust like a dog again. I remember someone whispering, we'll make it better. And after years of abuse, love did just that. So, time for some featured pets now. This is Nigel, who has just decided to walk out of frame. Nigel, will you come here? Come here, buddy. Come on, Nigel. Nigel, come back over here. Nigel is a four-year-old rat terrier who knows his name. He's fairly agile, as you can see. Nigel, will you come down here? And will you sit? Thank you. He knows a lot of commands, actually. Will you sit again? 
And can I get a paw? Thank you for the paw. Nice. And then I'm going to have you down. Will you come back? Nige, here you go. I got too many treats that I dropped. Sit. Hey, 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 hey. Sit. And then down. Down. Nice. He's about four years old. He is um, a great dog, but he is very uncomfortable around other dogs. So he needs to go to a family that has no other dogs and he can't go to the dog park. He actually had kind of an incident at the dog park. So he needs to be a dog that enjoys your fenced backyard and going on walks with you. He's potty trained. He's obviously got some obedience training as well. Hey, Nige, will you come here? I know those cameras are nice. Come on up here. But he's a really nice guy. He has some issues with um, people picking him up and touching his feet and, and um, wanting to not have that space invaded. So it's probably a good idea if he does not go home with kids. So he's been a bit of a special project because, come here Nige, he likes to um, be a lonely only. So we need to find a family that is comfortable with him being the only dog in the house and also that doesn't have any other kids. If you're an empty nester, you want a dog that's gonna be a great walking dog, a dog that might do some fun uh, tricks with you, and a dog that will just be a great companion. Come here, Nige, he is your guy. And will you sit? Yeah, okay, sit down. I know he's a terrier, so he's all over the place. Will you sit? Thank you. And will you give me a shake? Thank you. Very nice. And that is Nigel. This is Gus. Um, Gus is a lovely large man. Here, Gus, can you show off your length and your girth? There you go. Gus is a big boy. He is a bloodhound mix. He is a big, lovable, apparently kind of slightly slobbery guy. He is a sweetheart, but as many bloodhounds are, if he gets outside the fence, he will follow his nose and he will end up in the next county. They actually say that Gus pulls for about 15 minutes when you're walking, then settles down and will heal quite nicely. So you may, um, if you're a walker or someone who likes to do that, hopefully you have enough strength to hang on to Gus for those first 15 minutes. Hey, Gussie, come here. Um, he likes to, uh, go for walks, he likes to play outside. He apparently is very, very friendly, so he loves to jump on kids and pull them down to his level. So Gus is probably not good for small kids. He would probably knock them over and um, then proceed to slobber them to death, so that might be a little bit uh, overwhelming for little kids. But he is a big, sweet, oh, there you go, lovable, lovable bloodhound mix. If you have any hound experience, he would probably be a great, um, I know, representative of hounds, right? There you go. Oh, you're gonna roll over? Oh, and you want a belly rub? Oh, Gus. He can escape. He can uh, also, he likes to get up at night and go outside and check out the scents and the smells there. So um, that was a little bit off-putting for his previous owner and they were having some difficulties. So they ended up needing to rehome him, but he is a lovely boy. He's gonna need a home that knows hounds. He's gonna need a home that probably has a fenced yard with a gate he can't open. He's gonna need a home that will take him out for walks and be able to handle him for the first 15 minutes. And most of all, he's just gonna need somebody who will cuddle and love him, right buddy? Oh, I know, thank you, thank you. And that is the lovely Gus. <laughs> Good boy. Hi everyone, I'm Andy Hoig. Hi, I'm Paul Madsen. Hola, que tal? Mi nombre es Saul Lopez. KPAO Community Television, where Omaha talks. I couldn't remember what it meant to fetch, or to shake, or even to run. All I could do was lie down, held captive by my own matted fur, neglected, broken. Incredible people removed the filth and repaired my crippled body. They helped me look and feel and trust like a dog again. I remember someone whispering, we'll make it better. And after years of abuse, love did just that.
KPAO Community Television, handmade in Omaha since 2013. I love to run, but I can't walk a straight line. It's because of my brain. It's been damaged. My previous owner left me unconscious. I still don't know what I did to make her so angry that night. Amazing people found me and gently nursed me back to health. They gave me my second chance. I once overheard a child ask if I'd walk straight again when I got to heaven. Maybe. But right now, I'm enjoying my little piece of heaven on earth. Thanks for joining us for The Dish. We'll have a new show once every two weeks that'll bring you more training tips and pet health tips, information about events that are going on at the shelter, and things that you, as a pet owner, can use. So for now, goodbye, but thanks for joining us, and have a great week.